Welcome to Burning Bush World Ministries. My name is Latina Cates. Father God, let me say everything that you want me to say. Let me do everything that you want me to do. And let this word fall on good ground, that the listeners would indeed be hearers of this word and make application to your word, not only for today, but for a lifetime in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I declare that the kingdom of God is at hand. I said that the kingdom of God is at hand. That means God, who is the supreme authority and all of his miracle working power is still in control. And I command every demonic spirit under the sound of my voice to shut up and submit to Father God's authority and to mine as an ambassador of the most high God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Kings, today I'm going to talk about words. I had the opportunity to speak at a church earlier this year. And as always, I asked Father God, I prayed and I asked him, what did he want me to speak to those individuals about? And I had a dream that I was speaking on the topic words. So that is today's topic. Now, words are the containers or vessels by which everything was and is made of. Said another way, words are the containers or vessels that form the future. Father God spoke the whole world into existence. We see in the Bible from Genesis to Revelations where Father God spoke and everything he said, he saw and we see. Amen, amen, amen. Daddy God made us in his likeness and in his image. Because of that, he also gave us that same creative power and authority that is to speak things into existence as he does. So knowing that and understanding that people, kings, you need to be really careful with your words because you, what you say is what you will see. You have that dynamic power and authority in your words. Your words can either build your future up or it can tear your future down. Your words can either be a blessing or they can be a cursing. So let them be a blessing, amen? Proverbs 18.21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Please understand what I'm saying here. Words are the vessels that can, that, or containers that form the future. Jesus told us that his words are life and they are spirit. Amen, amen, amen. So we should speak his words because when we speak his words, we're speaking life, we're speaking spirit, and we're speaking truth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Also, or better yet, say what Father God says. That's what you should be saying. Say what Father God says about you. Say what Father God says about you and say those same things about your children. Well, what does he say? He says that you are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. It gives a list, a long list of blessings. Amen, amen, amen. That section of scripture is not just for the Hebrew children. It's not just for the Israelites. It is for anyone 
who is in the body of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Parents, don't say negative things about your children. Don't say that you're stupid. Don't call them stupid and lazy and tell them that they don't listen and they're good for nothing. Don't say all those things to them. Some of it may be true. They may be hard headed and don't listen well, but don't say it. Don't say it because when you say it, and especially if you're saying it over and over again, you're solidifying it. You're putting a seal on that thing. It's, it becomes a declaration. And what you say is what you will see. You're prophesying their future. You prophesy your children's future. Kids do what you say. They do what you do as well. Amen, amen, amen. Job 22, 28 says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. In other words, when you keep saying this over and over and over again, it turns into a declaration, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. That means it's going to be visible. You will see it. It's going to show up. Amen. Amen. Learn a lesson from my testimony. Right around 1999, my employer was talking about making some changes in the workplace. And I thought I was going to lose my job. So I went back to school and got an advanced degree with hopes of being promoted. Amen, amen, amen. Well, in 2001, I completed a master in business administration degree with a concentration in human resource management. I advocated and advocated for myself on my job. Nevertheless, upper management overlooked me for years. Positions that I qualified for, they didn't even post those positions. They were just assigned to other people. In other words, I didn't even have the opportunity to bid on those positions. My being overlooked was so blatant and so obvious until coworkers and even other supervisors started asking me, why didn't I get the position? Well, I would tell my husband what happened. I would tell my coworkers that were close to me what happened. And I kept telling the Lord. And I kept saying these things over and over and over again. I kept telling those that were close to me what I was saying. Why didn't I leave? I didn't leave because my children were 10 minutes away and I could get to them at any time if necessary. Also, I made decent money and I had benefits and I didn't want to commute an hour or so to another slightly higher paying job or a higher paying job because oftentimes you lose that money in the commute and you certainly lose that time. So on March 13, 2009, the Lord spoke to me and he said for me to say good things about my job and good things about my skills, my knowledge and my abilities. So I started declaring every day in my car on my way to work, I would say I have excellent work knowledge, skills and abilities and experience. My supervisor, other supervisors, co-workers, executive directors, and administrative directors, they can only say good things about me. See, Father God had me say what I wanted to see. Amen? Well, it took 10 years for that thing to even start to turn around. Do you hear me? This year, in 2019, I got an office. I won a, a recipient rights person of the year award and I haven't received everything that I may have coming to me, but I know this, Father God is working on my behalf. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My point is this, words are the containers that form the future. You must say what you want to see versus saying what you see. The Bible says, now repeat this, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Amen. Amen. So whether you're saying things that are good or bad, whether they be a blessing or a cursing, 
you're going to see what you say. Lord Jesus told us that we will give an account for every idle word that we speak. Now, idle words don't go anywhere. They're not doing anything. So we're going to give an account for our words anyway. You might as well make them count. The Lord's brother, James, said in the book of James, he talks about the tongue. And he said in James 3, 6 through 10, that, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. My brother, these things ought not so to be. Your mouth defiles you. Your mouth defiles you. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 18, but those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Jesus also told us in Luke 6, 45, that a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Your mouth is the gate by which things exit or come out of your soul. Your eyes and your ears are the gates by which things enter your soul. Your mouth is going to be full of everything you permit your eyes and ears to listen and see. Amen, amen, amen. Ephesians 5.26 talks about how the word of God will wash you. When you read and you study your word, you spend time with Father God, you will change. The word will change you. Amen. Amen. Furthermore, it is with words that we confess Christ. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With words, we confess Christ, and we are made righteous. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Also, it is by our words that we overcome. Listen to this. Revelation 12, 11. It says, and they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loveth their not life, not unto death. Words are the containers by which everything is made. Words form your future. Lord Jesus cast out demons with his words, and that's just the same way we have to do it here. We cast them out with our words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus told us to speak to the mountain. Why? Because we have power in our words. Amen. 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 Moses got in trouble and was not permitted to enter into the promised land because he did not speak to the rock as he was instructed. He hit the rock. Do you remember? So do you understand why I'm trying to get this point across to you? Your words have power and you need to use them righteously. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Revelations 19, 15 speak of Jesus returning to the earth 
with a sharp sword in his mouth. In fact, let me read that verse. It is Revelation 19, 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The sword in his mouth are words. The sword in Jesus' mouth, when he returns and set everything straight, are words. Remember, words are the containers by which everything is made and they form your future. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I pray that you... Uh, Take control of your words. Ask the Lord to help you with your mouth. The only way to correct your mouth is with the word of God. That's the only way to tame it. If you don't know the Lord, I want to pray with you. And if you want to reunite yourself to the Lord, I want to pray with you. So the Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. So we're going to do that. But before we do, to open the line of communication, we're going to first ask for forgiveness. This will take away all the hindrances between you, Father God, and Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So raise your hands if you want to. I raise mine because I surrender to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. And repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Father God, forgive me for everything, everything, Lord. If I've offended you, I repent. I don't want to offend you. I don't want to offend you. Father God, I believe in your son, Lord Jesus, that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come live in my heart. Make me your disciple in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that easy prayer, I believe that you have been saved. You are now in the kingdom of God. You are a king. You are in the body of Christ. You have power and authority that you need to learn more about. I encourage you to get involved with a word-based church where you can find more about, find out more about yourself and find out more about Father God. Amen. Come back here and I will help you. I love you so much. Go on uh, Amazon.com and get my book. Messages from God, Experiencing and Understanding the Supernatural. It will help you, especially those of you who have supernatural experiences. This will really help you, I'm telling you. It, it makes a difference. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, my name is Latina Cates. I'll see you next time. If this message has been a blessing to you and you would like a copy of today's broadcast, visit our website at www.burningbushworldministries.org or write to us at Burning Bush World Ministries, P.O. Box 611-333, Port Huron, Michigan, 48061. Or you can write us via email at burningbushworldministries at gmail.com. You can find Latina Cates and Burning Bush World Ministries on Facebook. And you can follow Latina Cates on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week.